It's Aboriginal health in our hands for our people, by our people, and um, I think it's absolutely vital. The World Health Organisation promotes Indigenous primary health workers as leaders in addressing health inequality. And here in Australia, this workforce is gaining strength. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health workers are employed across a range of sectors, working in government programs, Aboriginal community controlled health services, as well as in the private sector. They work alongside GPs, nurses and allied health, but they also come together to unite their voices in their own professional association. Natsiwa, or the National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Health Worker Association. The formation of Natsiwa in 2009 was an important step in acknowledging the significant role that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health workers play in helping to close the gap in this country. The association aims to lift the profile of health workers and achieve recognition for their role as a vital and valued component of healthcare teams. With national registration for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health workers, Natsiwa works to support their members in their commitment to improving the health and well-being of their communities. At a recent Natsiwa forum in Cairns, which focused on national registration and accreditation, we spoke to a number of people about their work, why it was important to them and their people, and what was unique about their profession. I feel that the role of the Aboriginal health worker um, in closing the gap, for example, for, for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health, you know, peoples is absolutely vital. Um, you know, we used to be the Jackie Jackies, the liaison officers, the interpreters, but a lot of our people haven't had good access to decent health care. I remember when I was in the hospital, I remember going to the hospital when I was sick, um, 8, 9, 10, 11, and we'd go in, mum would take me in. We might have been the second or third one there, but I'll tell you, we were the last, we were the last ones to be seen, and I remember that, mm. and that sticks in my mind. The Indigenous population have every right to access mainstream health and if they do see that there is a health worker there that, that can help them and that can educate them, um, that's, that's what it's all about basically and, and that's helped to you know, close, close the gap. My thing is, is that Aboriginal health workers um, are closing that gap around access and, um, and it's very important for our people that they feel comfortable when they're being cared for that they know that people understand where they're coming from, what their family structures are and who they belong to. Um, and, in, you know, with primary health care, it's around all of those things. And it's really, really important that um, Aboriginal health workers have access to, you know, nationally accredited training, you know, that they have the capacity to be registered as health practitioners if they wish to be or if it's part of their employment. And, um, in caring for Aboriginal people, I believe that Aboriginal health workers are absolutely vital. I knew our health was bad, but not to the extent it was. You know, when I started to think that, you know, we'd drop it, we, we were dying at the age of 54, and I thought, oh, heck, you know, because, you know, working in private industry, working with non-Aboriginal people, you don't really get to hear it or see it and all this sort of stuff. And, you know, my family, we, we were pretty healthy. I thought until we started, the day started going and all this sort of stuff. So it was really highlighted when I started doing the health work course and, by the, and I really got into it. I started back in 1999 um, down in Bowen as a trainee health worker. I had the don of the hospital back there um, ask me if I'd like to have a go. I was a mother of five kids, so I was looking after my kids at home and I thought, I'll blow it, I'll give it a go. And so I started off there as a sole um, person, as a trainee. Got a lot taught by the nurses at the hospital, at the Bowen Hospital. And um, then I had an opportunity to go to the Cape in 2004 and work as a sexual health worker there. So I did um, sexual health work right up until 2010 before I got the role as the manager of health worker services. We've got some generalists, we've got women's health health workers, we've got sexual health health workers, mental health, ATODs, child health, maternal health, and just the ones that just do a bit of everything within the communities. They all hold a portfolio and they take lead when visiting um, services come into the communities. 
I'm from the community of Yaraba. My father's people are the Kunganji people from Yaraba. I started my career as an Indigenous health worker and um, throughout the years I've progressed up the ranks. Uh, my first position was a um, 003 health worker and I just I kept moving up to a 004, 006, 007 and um, now my current position is the Executive Director of Indigenous Health. So I sit with all the executives in our health service and I report directly to the District Chief Executive Officer. I have two units that I manage. I have a Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Health Management Unit in Cairns and I also service manage the Yarraba Primary Health Care Service. I suppose my passion for working in health is trying to improve the health outcomes for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. We know that there's about a 20 year life expectancy difference between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples and I like working in the health industry to look at how we can close that gap, making sure our services are culturally appropriate so our people can come in and access the services, that we have competent trained staff that can also deliver quality culturally appropriate services and something that we're very strong on this year is the cultural practice program which is a, pro a revised cultural awareness program where we've trained our health workers to become facilitators to deliver this program. Now this program is about training non-indigenous staff of all professions, so your doctors, your nurses, your allied health, any other specialty, um, how to um, be culturally aware when they're servicing our people. The Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health worker, their roles within the community is they're a cultural brokerage. Um, they work alongside with clients so that they can give the simple English when doctors are talking to them. They teach the clients what medication that they're taking, the side effects of the medication they're taking. Um, involve family members, especially if it's like insulin and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's a, it's a variety of roles that they hold under one little banner. I'm a Cubby Cubby man from the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, uh, Bourbon Mountains specifically. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also, that's one of my roles. My other role is, uh, my work life is uh, a project officer for Queensland Health. And the project I work on is called PEPA and it's, uh, it's about palliative care and um, end of life issues. Um, and one of the things, or a part of the project that I do is um, I travel around communities in Queensland um, and I gather in uh, Aboriginal health workers um, from all different streams. They could smooth, the, they could be the oil on the water, you know, and make things just a little bit, because it's a very volatile time, uh, within families when, when uh, someone's passing on. Um, tempers can get very short, you know, misunderstandings uh, of, of, of uh, a very... Um, uh, it's a time for, you know, we've got to be clear and concise with, with who we're dealing with, and, you know, the messages that are, that are sent, you know, from one side to the other, like, um, you know, the hospital staff might say, oh, you know, um, you know, you better call the family in, you know, because, you know, so-and-so is going to pass away. Well, the hospital staff might not realise that when they say that, they're, they're, they could be talking about 20 or 30 people, you know, uh, coming in and, you know, of course that's going to, you know, upset people, you know, because they're not used to having, yeah. you know, our mob are big. I, I see the health worker role very vital in, in that sort of stuff. Um, uh, as a, as a uh, they understand our mob and they also understand the system that they're working in. The Advanced Cardiac Health Worker um, does phase one, which is education at the bedside for those who present to hospital who have had a heart attack. So what I do is I go to the bedside and I speak to them about their lifestyle risk factors and I educate them about um, how they can make changes to their, their lifestyle. And once, like if they have to have a procedure, like an angiogram procedure, uh, I educate them about um, what's involved in that angiogram procedure and, and that um, is showing them a DVD 
um, that is specifically culturally appropriate for the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people that, that come into hospital. Mm -hmm. And then after that, um, once they've had their procedure, uh, I then do further education and make contact with those uh, health workers back in the remote communities so then they can follow them up and, um, and just support them to help them to make behavioural changes once they've left the hospital. I think I can relate to uh, those, those people a lot more easily. Uh, they can open up to me, whereas if, um, if they are asked certain questions by registered nurses and doctors, they might not open up and they might not get the, the whole lot of that information. Whereas if I'm talking to them and they know who I am and they see me as a health worker, uh, they can, they, they tend to be a little bit more comfortable and, and they can open up a lot more so I can get a lot more information than, than what the registered nurse or, or the doctor can get. I've been a health worker for 40 years. I had this passion, I suppose, and I think, you know, when, when you get that passion and with, when you get that belly burning, you know, uh, sensation that you want to, you know, you want to do something, you want to you want to do something for your community, so you know you uh, you want to make a make a change. You know, if I can make a change and you know do something, not only for my people but also for myself too, as a being as a health, health professional. My job now is I manage a drug and alcohol unit in Redfern. Um, we've been out about ten years now, but. I'm still, you know, the, you know, because I'm a manager of drug and alcohol unit, you know, I do drug and alcohol counselling. I'm still a health worker. I've always will be a health worker. You know, I can go. On, I know it's, it's a way. I can go on and do lots of other things, become manager, do whatever. You know, CEO. That's not going to happen. But that's what I'm saying. But I'm still a health worker, and I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that title. Always have been. The major area in my role is to do the newborn hearing screening, which is a very important screening for all bubs for learning and speech development. So that's why it's very important that um, every mothers that have their babies at the hospital at Cairn Space, the baby needs to have the screening. However, I've had to go into other communities to screen babies as well because they may go, for example, to Mossman and they may have the baby there, then I have to go to Mossman then and screen the baby and see how the hearing is for learning and speech development. We not only see Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, we, we see the whole community. So that's including um, from baby to the oldest person who requires anything to do with the nose or the throat or the ears and that. Um, I'd really like to see us, well, the Aboriginal health workers, the, the, the role of being taught in schools. So, you know, make them, make them be aware of the fact that they can, there is a pathway into that, a career pathway into it. And I think that's what we need, those young ones to, to be aware of that. Um, you know, I'm always on this bandwagon about the young people because I'm, you know, I've been there a long time, you know, and we should be rallying for them, you know, who's coming behind us, saying who's going to wave the flag then. They need to have the training and knowledge and understanding about all of these things around health. Being an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health worker is an excellent career to get into, um, not only for yourself but for the community. We want to close the gap and the only way we can close the gap is have Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people working in the clinics, the hospitals, so that people can relate when they come in, they can translate for you, especially if language is involved, you know. We really need community people to take hold of this and, and go with it. You can learn heaps, you can, you can be a trainee and then you can go through and to be a doctor, but start with the basics as a health worker and stick to it because you'll get a lot of satisfaction out of it. I think the role of the Aboriginal health worker is really important because we are front line, we are community, we are there. I mean, our family are the ones, the health we're looking after, you know, our extended family, 
all that. It's not, you know, I, I, I did the health workers way back when, and I, I started on a Monday, three weeks later, I was topped in the street out of Merrick or wherever the heck, and this bloke said, oh, you're Brad, you work at the medical, I said, what? And they said, I've got this issue. So I'm only a student, so I went back to work and I said, this has come up. And the following Friday, that issue was fixed with this bloke. And I saw him the following Friday, and he walked up and said, oh, thanks for that, Brad. That made me feel good, and yet I didn't do it. All I, all I did was highlight the issue. And that was me. That, they know who the health workers are. They can approach us. They're more likely to approach us, sit down and have a cup of tea and start talking to us about stuff. And then, you know, a lot of them don't want to go to doctors. Because, you know, there's a shame, there's all that sort of stuff. As the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health worker in Bowen, we had a, um Aboriginal man, he was an elderly man, who had no idea of the medications he was taking and just was popping pills every day and had no idea. I went around to visit him one day and I said, oh, what medication are you on? And he said, I don't know, I just take all these different coloured tablets. So I actually took his pill box up to the hospital and, and found out the medication he was on. The thing was, he was on contradicting medication. And if I hadn't have taken that time to take that box up to the pharmacist to find out, I found out a couple of years later that it could have caused his death. So by an Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander health worker going and knocking on the door and saying, how's things going? What medications you're on? And to, following it up for yourself, he could have been dead back when I was the health worker, so I'm glad that I took that time. It's, it's also about, yeah, working alongside Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health workers and now they're sort of the link between the doctor, the patient, the community. And if we're talking holistic care, our health workers are the one that knows the socioeconomic issues for our mob and um, being sometimes like a liaison or an interpreter for them as well because we know that our hospital in Cairns is the hub for a lot of patients from Cape York and Torres Strait, and we need... Um, so some of those people that come down don't understand. Sometimes we might need an interpreter service, so we need our health workers there or our liaison officers, Indigenous liaison officers there to be the link or the interpreter as well. It's all about respect, but then it's also about building that re relationship as well. Like, I may go into an Aboriginal community, but I have to build my respect first as, because I'm a Torres Strait Islander, and going into another community, I have to build that rapport and respect first for the community to, to say, oh, okay, I can trust you. If that's not done from the beginning, well, it's going to make it much more challenging um, when I enter any, um, into a community and that. Yeah, so I feel my role is very, uh, this role that I play at the hospital, I build that relationship quickly with the health workers from different communities and then that's how that the rest of the uh, relationship is built from the community through the health workers and then from the community themselves. We know our mob, you know, and we always like to see a familiar face or a face that we can relate to, you know, with our mob and um, I highly, highly value uh, our, uh, our mob that are, that are working in the health uh, profession. I love working with people but I feel that the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health workers need to be supported within their own profession and be recognised as practitioners in their own right. No recognition has never come to our health workers. They've been floundering for so long that they need to be recognised that they are professional people. They are a professional body. And until we start getting out there and informing people that we are a professional person, it won't happen. It's Aboriginal health in our hands for our people, by our people, and um, I think it's absolutely vital. Mm -hmm.